Hello YouTube, this is Hunter Surge of the Brawler Cafe, here with a video that's been a long time coming. Age of Royalists is just around the corner, I'm doing this like really last minute, I've been meaning to get to this for months, but today we are finally going to go over uh, the Aquas cards for Bakon Resurgence. So basically, to make these videos take less time this time around, I'm only going to be focusing on the notable stuff. This is mostly going to be the good cards that you want to actually run. But there are going to be a couple cards that I've seen like hyped up and I want to get in a word about, stuff like that. The plan is to get these videos all done uh, by the end of next week, get them all done out by the end of next week. And then since we'll have the Age of Royalists uh, set this by then, immediately start jumping into the Age of Royalists videos. That is the plan. That is the plan that I have set. Hopefully I can follow it. We'll see. With that said, let's get into it because we've got Aquos today. One of the big things that came out of Bakon Resurgence were these reroll cards. And I honestly could make a video all on its own just praising the general design of the reroll cards. And I probably will at some point in the future. But today we're just going to talk about if they're good. And Aquos has some of the best. Uh, Aquos, all three of Aquos, so basically every faction received three reroll cards. Two of them have an optional reroll effect, and one of them requires a reroll but gives you some bonus when you open on the reroll. All three of Aquos's are fantastic, amazing. Aquos got the best pool of reroll cards and they're just amazing. So the first two, the optional reroll cards are Dark, Dark Waters and Deep Dive. These are both one cost rerolls uh, that give you a different effect in addition. Dark Waters is plus 200B, so it's just on curve. Um, and Deep Dive is a draw card, so one cost filter. It's like Inspire, except instead of plus one damage, you get an optional reroll. Um, in addition to allowing you to not automatically lose a battle due to missing, uh, reroll cards are also very useful for reactivating unopened effects, which there are, of course, more of in Resurgence. Um, so they are pretty fantastic all around, and I generally include as many of these low cost rerolls as I can in a deck. Like in Aquos, I will basically always run three of Dark Waters and Deep Dive unless I'm running like, unless it's like some combo deck that really needs some other piece more than it needs those cards. Um, and I would honestly recommend most players do the same. It's nice to have that safety net. It's nice to, uh, they're, they're typically like good cards for their cost regardless. Um, giving you more early game options is pretty great. They're just really good cards all around and reprocking the unopened effect is also pretty great. Uh, the mandatory reroll card for Aquos is Riptide. Uh, this is very similar to Cute Apocalypse, a card I praised quite a bit in Chaos and, and use a bunch in my uh, Chaos Eyes and Nilius deck even though I'm still stuck in Battle Rollers. Tonight. Apparently not for much longer, but hey, I'm still stuck there. Um, my Riptide is very similar to it. Doesn't require any sort of keyword to be online. You just have to reroll, and if you open on the reroll, you get plus 500B and draw two cards. You're not drawing as many cards as you would um, with uh, Cute Apocalypse. However, you can draw that third by using the reroll to proc the new Shun Kazami, which we'll be getting to in a couple cards after we get through all the actions. Uh, but yeah. Um, it can effectively be Cute Apocalypse, and even without the third draw, it's pretty worthwhile. Um, great card all around. Uh, I tend to run around two of this, personally. Um, when it comes, I, I think I've said this before, but when it comes to four cost or higher actions, these tend to be what end up in my two of tech slots, uh, because that's a cost that can, um, once you get to four cost, you're getting uh, you're getting to cards that are much more situational, and you don't want them sitting in your hand for long lengths of time, especially since they're probably going to eat up like um, your entire turn using them because of that high cost. Uh, moving on from there, we have Blinding Ink, uh, much better negate cards than the ones we saw in set one. Uh, for just two cost, it negates any action that costs three energy or less. Most good actions cost three energy or less, and the ability to uh, shut down a Stone Skin or a Wave Slash or a Light's Courage or an upcoming Avalanche um, for just two at any time is pretty great. The low cost is really what makes it. 
Um, like turn three, you can do this into into a, like basically it's mainly that it's lower cost means it's it's more reliable to do this and do something else so it makes it less that it's on like it, it makes it less so of a card that is only useful if you're ahead which was often the case with triple blast cannon and absorb it's also fantastic because it stops might of Cyndius while being the same cost as might of Cyndius. Uh, so you're able to drop it on a turn 2 Myocindia's play, which is a pretty big deal. Hurricane Winds. Uh, this is, in essence, a zero cost. Uh, it's a three cost action that gives you plus 300B, and you can play an action card that costs four energy or less for free. This is mainly there. This is mainly going to end up being uh, to activate Wave Splash and get its plus 1000B off. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Hurricane Winds myself. Um, if I want that capacity, I'll just run actual zero costs, uh, like Greater Water Boost, or Quick Fire, or Shade Blade, or whatever. Um, and the main reason for that is that, like, an actual zero cost will actually be able to activate, uh, activate Tides. Um, I'm not a very big fan of this card. I know a lot of other people are, but I, I don't like it that much because... It's effectively a zero cost that is less versatile than actual zero cost. Um, I only run Hurricane Winds when I'm playing a deck that wants more zero costs than are actually available, uh, which is basically just Aurelis Trox. Um, I find it pretty great in Aurelis Trox because in Aurelis Trox you can go Hurricane Winds, like if you have multiple Hurricane Winds in hand, you can go Hurricane Winds into Hurricane Winds and that'll actually be a useful play because each Hurricane Winds isn't plus 300B, it is instead uh, plus 600 B and plus 4 damage. Um, much, much more uh, worthwhile. Uh, when you're not playing that deck, when you're not using it on Trox, or Relos Trox, um, that play isn't super worthwhile because it's eating away at your hand for not a whole lot of game. Um, but in that one case, uh, I do find it very useful in that application. Love it in that deck, don't really like it otherwise. Unstoppable. Uh, in this set, we also had a lot of uh, cards that gave you uh, gave you special bonuses if you were sent if you were opened on a fist core or a shield core. These are very obviously more meant to buff fists than they are for shields because the fist ones are basically all at least passable, but the shield ones are pretty much all trash. Um, and that's the way it really should be. Uh, because Fist is numerically the weakest core type. Um, so Fist really needed the buff more than anything else. And they got some really great cards. Um, Unstoppable isn't the best of them. But it's still a fairly decent card. Uh, for 3 cost you're getting plus 600B. So that's an on par uh, B bonus. And when you're holding a Fist uh, you get plus 2 Frost Strike. Um, this is basically the best Frost Strike card in the game right now. Uh, because it's giving you on par uh, B power bonuses while also giving you Frost Strike on top of that. Um, it's a fairly good card, uh, not one I would prioritize, but if you have space for it uh, in your fist deck, just throw it in. It's pretty nice. Now, this is the hero I talked about earlier, Shin Kazami. This card is fantastic. Three cost, when you open a Bakon, you may draw a card. So, yeah, this, this card, like, get this down. This card is a weak tempo play, however, I uh, do want to keep that in mind because like you will very often, like if you put this down turn 3 or whatever turn you end up putting it down because of the 3 cost, uh, you will probably end up losing that round. So be aware of that, like if you're going into your third turn and your opponent has won the first two rounds, don't just drop Shin Kazami because then you're just going to lose that round and then take a team attack. Be willing to... Uh, delay putting it down in cases like that. Um, but once you have this down, this card will provide you the resources uh, that you need for basically the rest of the game and will provide you even more uh, when comboed with rerolls. So it's all around fantastic. Um, great card. Uh, I feel it's a staple 3 up in literally any deck that features Aquos. Now, from there, we're moving on to Bakugan. Um, now, we won't be talking about any of the Wave 2 or Wave 3 stuff. Uh, since Age of Royalist is just around the corner, I'll just talk about them in those videos. 
Um, and if you want my basic thoughts on any of the Age of Orlis character cards, uh, uh, Age of Orlis, not Age of Orlis character cards, uh, the Wave 2 and 3 character cards, I did a separate video on that, so just go check that out. Uh, so starting off, we have Kirkelios Ultra. Uh, this came from Wave 3. Um, it's mainly used in fists because it's a 701, um, uh, including the fist bonus, it's 850. Three, so same beat power as a Chaos Pegatrix. Unfortunately, it does come with a shield, uh, which means it's not giving you your perfect field of fists, uh, which can, on occasion, be important to have uh, when you end up sucking up a bunch of fists from your field using um, using Mega Punch. Um, and it evolves at two costs. This is the real big draw of this Bakugan. Um, Having a really early game evolution is really, really nice. And Hyper Kakelios Ultra in particular is pretty versatile. Um, now it doesn't get terribly big. It just becomes a thousand for 1156 with the, counting the amount from the core itself. Uh, though on the turn you play, that will be an additional two damage for eight. But you generally want to be using Kakelios in the early game and avoid using him later if you can. Try to put him down on a turn where you can go say, say if if you need to use him post team attack, you want to do some, some, set something up where you're able to use your really powerful card to get him a win, because he's not going to be able to do that as easily on his own merits as the Pegatrixes are post evolution. Um, his Frost Strike is also uh, fairly nice to have around. Um, you can play it down when you're doing a team attack if it's going to put your opponent in a situation where they're not going to be able to, uh, if, where they're not going to be able to play a flip through that frost strike. That can be a game-winning situation, uh, but it's not the main focus of the card. The frost strike is nice because it's there in addition to an already good card, um, and this is a buck on that. If you have not already picked it up, I would probably not recommend picking it up. Uh, because it gets pretty hard outclassed by Aqua's Hydronoid Ultra um, without even having its evolution. Um, but we'll know the evolution soon enough, and I'm pretty sure it'll be decent enough. Um, besides that, um, well, actually, you might want to still pick it up if you want to play this, because the thing is with Hydronoid is that, uh, is that we don't know when the non-diamond version is coming out, we have no clue when that's happening. Like we have UPC leaks that give us basically all of uh, the first wave of Age of Aurelis, and there's no sign of Hydronoid there. It's not in Bakon Resurgence Wave Three in any form uh, besides the Diamond. So we actually have no clue when that's going to be coming out in a non-Diamond form. So it could actually be a while. So if you want to play Fists with Aquos, which is I think the best way to play the deck, uh, pick it up for that. Uh, just be aware that it is very likely going to be replaced by Hydronoid. Next up we have Tritonium Ultra. This is a fantastic Bakon for Helix decks. Only comes with one Helix, unfortunately. Uh, but it has an innate reroll ability. Um, ends up on a plus 5 and minus 1 Helix core. This will be 1100 for damage. Which is pretty good baseline. Um... Not quite the tippity top anymore, but it's pretty solid. And like Kerkelios, uh, he also has a low cost evolution. Only two costs, um, and he goes to 1500 uh, and 7 damage. 1500 being 7 damage, still has the innate reroll ability, which is nice to have. Um, and yeah, uh, two costs for plus 500B um, and more than that in damage, uh, plus 3 damage. Um, pretty good evolution that you're getting really solid stats for its costs above par and B power gain uh, which is really really good to, good to have um, it does fall off later in the game but that's what other helix buck on are for I guess uh, also Tritonium core this is not an amazing Bakugan however if you are dead set on running um, running an Aquos Darkest Shield deck with double Aquos for Flooding Waters, giving you plus 400. Uh, I feel that Tritonium Core is a much better option than Hyder's Ultra. Um, it gets higher B in, in both base and evolution. Evolution is the same cost, and it gets a nice incidental Frost Strike, 
uh, that you can use to help force your team attacks through. Um, it's not amazing and will very easily be dropped for something better when something better comes along, but I feel it is better than Hydra's Ultra because I don't think that Victor ability is very useful um, consistently in, uh, in Aqua's Darkest Shields. Going back to Fists for a moment, we have Aqua's Trox Ultra. Um, this is, of course, another Fist Bakugan, uh, like your Kelios. It comes with double fists, um, and it ends up at 750B and 8 damage. So it's more damage focused than you'll find with your Kelios. Um, its evolution doesn't come out until 4, which causes it to kind of clash with Chaos Pegatrix, and it's much, much weaker than either of the Pegatrix evolutions. Um, in the B power department. As I said, it's more focused on the damage side of things. Um, it hits uh, 1250B with 14 damage, uh, so very, very high damage count and has a, an innate reroll ability, but its high cost and pretty low B power um, uh, makes it not that desirable in my opinion. Um, when it comes to damage, you're getting plenty of that off of your other Balkan, and you don't really need you don't really need your Aquos Choice to also be doing that. Like, you can just use your Aquos Choice as your third Bakon in the team attack, and its attack will end up big anyways off the back of your two initial Bakon. Um, so, yeah, I'm not I'm not too fond of this Bakon. Um, if you want that higher damage focus, this does work. Um, but uh, this also requires you to get a battle pack to get access to it, uh, which is not, not the best. Um, but yeah, uh, that's Trox. He's okay. And lastly, we have Aquos Pegatrix Ultra. This is one that I'm covering because I've seen it hyped up quite a lot, but it's not all that great. Its base form is okay. Uh, has that nice 600B uh, baseline, which is very always very nice to see, as well as its shield core, which is uh, better B power boosting than you'll get off of Fangs Orb. Uh, but its evolution is very, very lackluster. Um, for four costs, you're only going up 400B. Uh, you're getting five damage. Um, but this is, this is of course, a very damage-focused Bakon because in addition to going up to that six damage from its one before, it also has the Victor ability to gain damage equal to the energy cost of the top card of your deck. Um, this is just not all that useful. Um, big damage isn't something to focus on. Especially when you're only getting plus 400 B off of four cost, that is literally half of what that cost should be giving you. Um, and Fangzor is way, way, way better than this. Um, so I would not recommend using this block on, even though it's been hyped up quite a bit. Um, recommend against it. And lastly, we are going to cover the new stop flips that Aquas received in this set. Um, along with the core type, holding a specific core type theme that we have uh, earlier in the set, uh, that carries over to the flips, uh, with us getting new flips that stop block on holding specific core types. Uh, so for Aquos, we have a one cost that stops block on holding a shield or helix, and a zero cost stopping block on that hold fists. Now, um, Aquos and Pyrus once again kind of got snubbed on their flip quality. Um, because because they got stuck with the two core type flips that cover Helix, and Helix is not very popular. It's not a very common core type, um, and it's all around not really what you want. However, Freeze Freeze is pretty pretty nice because Fist is one of the most common core types. Um, besides the Fist deck having very powerful tools at its disposal. Uh, Fist also tends to be the core type that is given to Bakon that wants to be made weak, that uh, Spin Master wants to nerf um, because it is the weakest core type. So a lot of uh, Bakon that are in general strong will end up with a Fist core attack, will end up with a Fist core coming along with them. Um, so they will often, often end up with a bunch of Fists on the field. Um, so Freeze is nice if you don't have access to any of the better uh, core type flips in your deck and you want to carry one. Uh, for the core type flips in general, uh, just going to give my general perspective on these. Um, I think they are cards that work, uh, that would work best in 
a sideboard format or uh, in a locals like when you're playing at your locals you're going to get a pretty good feel of what the rest of your opponents are going to be playing um, so they come in useful there uh, but at a regional level setting they're going to be much much less reliable so feel free to use them at a local level, but unless we get sideboards, I don't think that they're a terribly consistent type of flip um, at that higher level. However, um, they do they do work uh, fairly decently as a backup flip. I would never have a core type flip as my primary flip. Um, I would always make sure that's a non-X or something that actually stops all types of damage um, if we ever get more of those. Um, but they're, they're fairly decent as backups to give you some additional coverage at a low cost. Uh, and lastly, we have Lost at Sea. Don't run this card. Uh, paying two to maybe stop an attack, to have a 50-50 chance of stopping an attack, don't do that. That's a really bad waste of space. Really bad card. Do not recommend. With that said, thanks for watching, guys. Um, as I said, we're going to be covering the rest of Resurgence, um, hopefully over the course of, uh, before the end of next week, and after that we'll be diving into Age of Royalists. So next time we will, we will be covering Darkest, with that said, it's Inherent Surge, signing off.